Hi everyone, welcome to the fourth episode of Beauty Weekly. For those of you who are new and wondering what this is, this is the show where Dave and I are going to be bringing you a little bit closer to the specimens housed here at the Beauty Biodiversity Museum, the research going on behind the scenes, and anything else we think is cool. We've been on a journey through each of the museum's six collections. We talked about the tetrapods, the fossils, and the fishes. And with those, we talked about the blue whale, uh, we talked about sound bacteria, and we talked about the porcupine fish. And if you'd like to watch all those videos, you can click on each of these links. But today, we're talking about something different. We're talking about the rhinoceros beetle, and that's in the entomology collection. So what can you tell me about the rhinoceros beetle? Well, first of all, we had uh, a really hard time picking a specimen from the entomological collection, even when we narrowed it down that we definitely wanted to do a beetle. Because mm -hmm. about something like 20% of all named and known species are beetles. So if you just. 20? Yes, yeah, so if you just wrote down the name of every single species on a piece of paper and put it in a hat and just picked five randomly, one of them would be a beetle. That's so one in five. It's one in five. It's yeah, real 20%. math. <laughs> real math. One in five. Actual math yeah. on the show. <laughs> Look it up. Um, yeah, so today we are looking at the rhinoceros beetle, Eupatorus gracilicornis. Mm -hmm. um, we have two really great specimens here. We have a, a male and a female. David, can you give any guesses to which one is which? Well, I am a simple man, mm -hmm. so I will make the simple choice. I'm going to say the one on the right with the really scary looking horn is probably the male. Well done. Right. Well done, well done you. Yeah, so um, just like male deer or a lot of other bovids, it's pretty common for the male of the species to have these large ornate horns on their heads. Mm -hmm. And the female will often choose her mate based on the size and shape of the horns. Okay. With rhinoceros beetles, it's a little different. The horns are not just for show, they are weapons. Oh. So males of the species will physically fight each other to gain access to the females. And depending on the horn shape, they'll have different fighting styles. So the rhinoceros beetle has this one very long cephalic horn here, and that's on a movable joint. Mm. So its strategy is to scoop up and throw competitors out of the way Whoa. to get access to its female here. So uh, you can probably say these beetles are both lovers and fighters. Is yeah, that right? yeah. Wow. All they right. Fight, they fight for love. Yeah. Fight for love. Yeah. We should all do that. So then other beetles will have different horn shapes and so different fighting styles. Um, the stag beetle is a beetle that's native to British Columbia, and its horn shape is quite different, so its strategy will be to wrestle other males of the species in uh, very much a similar way to how male deer wrestle for females. Like, male deer are like stags, just how the stag beetle got the oh, name. Yeah. yeah, I get it. But it's a bit smaller than the rhinoceros beetle, why is that? Uh, there's actually often a really big size difference between species from the tropics, like the rhinoceros beetle, which is native to Asia, and temperate species, like mm. the stag beetle, which is native to British Columbia. Temperate species tend to be a bit smaller, but despite their size, they're they're still very good fighters. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You, I think you should remind me to always turn around and just walk away whenever I meet a rhinoceros beetle or a stag beetle or anything. I told you that their horns were just for fighting, for right. gaining access to the females. Yeah. They are actually also kind of for presentation. Okay. Um. So. To explain this, I'm going to go into some developmental biology here for a second, if you will you will indulge me that. Please uh, be indulged. Thank you. Thank you very much. So there's this group of hormones that includes insulin and insulin-like growth factors. Yep. Uh, many people know insulin as the hormone that people with diabetes have to take because their body doesn't produce enough. Mm -hmm. There are lesser known physiological roles of insulin and insulin-like growth factors. Um, these hormones are responsible for making sure that all of your body parts grow to the correct size. Your body will receive external stimuli, such as food availability, temperature, stuff like that, and then will regulate the release of these hormones to make you grow to a certain size. So for example, in an environment with a ton of food, a larger body could be supported and would probably do better. Mm. So insulin and insulin-like growth factors make sure that you get to that large body size. Wow, I, I always thought insulin was pretty important, but I didn't know that it served all these functions, especially to the development of our bodies. Yeah. That's, that's really interesting. Yeah, mm. but not every tissue type or organ is equally sensitive to this group of hormones. So like you're taller than I am, so right. your your body is probably larger than mine, okay. but your eyeballs are not necessarily bigger than mine. They didn't grow at the same rate or in the same proportion, right? Mm -hmm. So some tissues just kind of ignore the signals from these growth hormones and they'll be about the same size for all individuals in a species, but some are hypersensitive to these hormone levels like the horn of the rhinoceros beetle. Two things. Okay. Uh, number one, I don't think you can say that about my eyeballs without testing that theory. <laughs> Sorry. Number two. 
I just had one. Yeah. Nothing else to to rebut my claims. Nah. Nah. Sorry. Pr proceed. So the hormone levels in the beetle will be dependent on the beetle's nutritional status, uh, whether it has an infection, whether it's under a lot of stress, and if all that stuff is bad. So if it's sick, if it doesn't get enough food, if it's under a lot of stress, these hormone levels will be quite low, and its horn will be very small. Mm -hmm. If the beetle is in excellent health. The hormones will be produced at high amounts, and the beetle's horn will be huge. So there's no way for a sickly individual to fake it with a big horn because it okay. just won't be making enough of these hormones. Mm. So the female, by looking at the size of the horn, knows she's getting a healthy, viable potential mate. Oh wow! Well, you know, Mother Nature is making honest males out of these beetles. Yes, I guess yeah. You could say. Yeah, you can say a lot about the rhinoceros beetles, but they are nothing if not direct. A absolutely. Yeah. Speaking of direct. That's it. That's all we have for this episode. Hey. So if you enjoyed hearing about rhinoceros beetles and you'd like to know more, feel free to check out the links in the description below. And be sure to check back next week for more cool stuff. Don't leave us alone, guys. Yeah, we'll yeah. have a new organism from the next collection, and we will have more stories about science. Excited? Yeah. How sharp do you think these are? <laughs>